Visit CCG Castle .com and get 5% discount on your purchase with TCG Center 5 code. Check read the description or visit CCG Castle for more. And once again, what is going on guys? Welcome back to Pokemon TCG Center. Another day, another video. And before I even start with the video, I'm just going to say that I'm sick. So sorry for that if, uh, if I will, you know, um, have some troubles while recording this video. Just to mention that at the beginning of the video. Um, anyways, um, today's video is all about post-rotation. Uh, Melamar, Necrozma deck. And this is the this is the deck list that I decided to build that I decided to publish. Um, it is probably <coughs> one of my um, sorry, one of my favorite decks for the post rotation. Um, I will probably spend a lot of time testing this deck and trying to improve it, um, since the TCGO still doesn't have um, the new set unfitted mines or whatever it's called I always have a um, hard time trying to pronounce some new words um, that I see for the first time in my life I don't even know what that means uh, I guess mines I know what the mines means but the word uh, in front of that anyways um, so there's gonna be a couple more cars that you can probably take with the new set and you should definitely consider the hang especially with Shirachi that reset stamp or whatever the card is called uh, pretty much and printed as a um, item almost like the n but only your opponent shuffles his or her hand and then draw the same amount of the cards equal to the remaining price cards <clears throat> definitely can be good uh, but yeah this is the deck list so um running four copies of psych recharge melomar as well as four copies of NK. why because you need to have four copies of them um then <coughs> oh my goodness then we have two copies of Giratina with Distortion Door. Um, I guess I don't need to spend too much time about speaking about Giratina. Um, it is going to be interesting to see um, damage spread with, you know, um, future format. And I kind of like that Distortion Door Giratina because you can put one damage counter and two if your opponent's bench Pokemon. So in, in some matchups, if you play versus, for example, Blacephalon, and if they um, play Jirachis, um, you can easily put one damage counter on each of Jirachi and then later you can just magical swap uh, or uh, use that advantage of the Sky Scorched Light. Um, the reason why I played that top of here with the magical swap is mainly because um, if you can't one hit knockout something and if your opponent constantly find a way to switch or heal, you might be able at least <coughs> at some stage of the game to use that magical swap. It is a very nice card for this build. And oh my gosh, it's not gonna be included for the post rotation because it's a Sun and Moon 45. And how in the world did I even miss that? So, <coughs> yeah, I mean, completely busted. Guess I'm gonna need to actually remove that out and basically um, include something else in it. Oh my gosh, yep, so probably we're gonna go then with the third Jirachi. Um, no damage, no damage swap anyways. Yeah, it would be a little bit too strong, I guess. Especially with that Sky Scorched Light, because why in the world you wouldn't use Sky Scorched Light and place, let's say, 360 damage counters and then swap them with the top level. It would be too strong. Um, Sun and Moon 96 or 98 and up are legal. So yeah, I'm running also two copies of um, Giratina. Um, uh, one copy of Downwing the Crossma GX with the Moon Eclipse GX. Um, then I guess I'm gonna go for now with three Jirajis and uh, um, two copies of Ultra Necrozma GX. Yeah, that's gonna be the Pokemon lineup. Um, moving on to the item cards four copies of Acrobike, four copies of Custom Catcher, um, four of each Mystery Treasure and Pokemon Communication, and then two of each for the Switch. Switch, Raiden Force for Energy Search, and two copies of a Skateboard. Um, Maybe it won't be that bad to play just four copies of Switch, two Jirachis, and yeah, probably I'm going to need to find a way to squeeze somehow four Switches instead of three Jirachis. I think two Jirachis and four Switches would be much better. Um, draw support, <coughs> not too many, just eight draw supporters, two Cynthia's, two Erika's, and four copies of Lily, and in addition to that, we're also going to find four copies of Spell Tag with um, powerful... Um, powerful tool which says that once your psychic Pokemon is knocked out with the spell tag attached to it, you can simply, you know, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon 
can play in any way you like. And at that energies, um, six psychic, uh, three metal, and one beast energy. And yeah, that's it. This is the deck list I'm gonna use in today's video. I'm um, sorry for my um, for my uh, fever that I have. Um, I hope that's not gonna be a huge problem. I didn't pick the rest of the video you're gonna watch. Make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel as always, and let me know in the comments what you think about it. So yeah, I'm sorry for that top little spoil and uh, troll. Yeah, it, it was definitely a troll, no doubt about it. Um, I didn't even pay attention. It is a Sun Moon 45. Um, still we can, <coughs> still we can use, um, still we can use top little um, but. Filters says that we can probably use Tapu Lele, um, but not Sun and Moon 45, but this one. But then we're gonna need either way Fairy Energy or Imp of Energy, and that's just not gonna be that good. And what about, what about, what about, um, what about not a blend energy it is a blend energy no it is a unit energy and it is actually a metal psychic and lighting so we're we can actually yeah it is a <coughs> crimson invasion so theoretically we can also use unit energy um as well but i think period and force is going to be much more better and with just regular basic energy card and that's gonna be a sweet spot. Anyways, let's move on to the game test so you can see this deck in action. So, see you in the game. All right, so I guess there's gonna be many different um, Necrozma, uh, Melamar, and Giratina deck lists um, for the post rotation. <clears throat> this is the one that I'm gonna use. And this is the one that I will probably need to, you know, tweak a little bit more, test it and see uh, can it actually be improved a little bit more? Um, I really like it so far. Um, it's not that bad. All right, so I didn't want to put that Giratina in the front, uh, mainly because I really want to have it in my disco pile so I can potentially use it as my advantage where I can um, then get it back with that distortion door. <clears throat> so I'm a little bit sick and uh, I apologize for that um, still trying to do some content and uh, create as always new videos um, looks like my opponent will have actually very explosive turn here and the only thing that I have available right now is that communication for um, Giratina into Jirachi and then switch and literally this is the only thing that I can actually do right now to stay in the game. And the good thing is that I also have a skateboard available. Other than that, we're gonna go with one metal energy attachment, uh, switch into Jirachi and then Stellar Wish hopefully into Lily. There we go. As I mentioned it, as long as you have Lily available right now, you can go for like six extra cards. And not bad way to start the game with the Mr. Treasure into the um, Inke. Gonna grab myself Inke um, since I already attached my um, well I have draw supporter for the following turn and I'm gonna have my well tell you what why not to do something like this if my opponent actually doesn't have Guzman available in the hand I can actually force him to um, take some punishment and then I can knock him out with my photo gazer. This is the only way that I can do something. Otherwise, um, I'm gonna probably get more benefit from Jirachi instead of that s single Inkei. Of course I will need three Inkeis and three Melomars, no doubt about that, sooner or later, um, so I can basically use those uh, Giratinas. Uh, but for now, I think I'm just perfectly fine. I'm gonna sacrifice my Inke in the front. And then I will try to get something out with the Stellar Wish. Um, try to knock that Turtonator out. And yeah, my actually opponent got me there. So he actually got me there. Oh, this is very, very tough. Um, 
I guess I'm gonna go for the Malamar instead. Um, yeah, I'm still gonna pay that retreat cost, no question about that. But I'm out of my um, Jirachis right now. <clears throat> At least I can play Lily. There we go, there is another Inky. Good way to start in turn two. And we're gonna be very cautious with that top of Lily play. So let's see if I can get something out here. Um, Erica's Hospitality. I don't have Drow Supporter. I actually have Drow Supporter. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna need that Lily. I'm actually <coughs> not gonna need that Lily. All right, so he managed to wake up. So um, at least Melomar is protected with that um, spell tag. I also played that top Lily with a magical swap, which in some cases can actually be very useful, especially if you use that Sky Scorched Light and if you, uh, and if you uh, put six damage counters to each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. That can literally be 300 damage counters spread it around the bench. Um, if the price count is, is a 6 or less, and then you can simply win the game with the magical swap. The magical things can actually happen, so there is a Rust reveal. Um, probably my opponent is trying to dig that, uh, that Guzma out. If he plays one, if not, then probably he's trying to get maybe a pair of custom catchers. Welder and the Salazzle uh, Rust reveal combo is very good. Um, for drawing the cards and getting those catchers in play. And there's another energy card and charge up. It's quite obvious that I don't want to promote my Necrozma in the front because I will trade two price cards for one, but there's literally no other options available for me. Um, there's nothing else that I can do. <coughs> All right. And there is one explosive jet. And he needs to discard, unfortunately, two energies. Probably two from the Negamandal. Alright. Once my opponent managed to... Gets in the front. Um, do I have another Psychic Energy in my discard pile? Yes, I have. Which basically means that I can even put my Inke in the front. And then think, what should I promote next? Um energy attachment to my in case so I can pay the retreat cost and obviously one Erica's hospitality a greedy and draw hand here no question about that there is another um, in case for the bench and what are we gonna need here we need one psychic recharge no question about that and other than that I'm gonna trade that Necrozma from my hand in exchange for the Melomar number two, so I can be ready for the following turn. Um, there we go, retreat. I can't simply risk. Um, I definitely need to start attacking my opponent and start to draw some price cards. And there we go. Um, how many energies do we have here? Zero in the discard pile, but next turn I will have like two of them. So for the Gazer for 180, and should be more than enough for the knockout. And there is a downswing Necrozma, which can actually be very useful in some situations, mainly for the Invasion Switch. Uh, but other than that, for the Moon Eclipse GX, if you are behind your opponent in the price count, um, you can actually use it in your advantage. And uh, with um, something like um, Beast Energy, you can add um, three more damage counters. So theoretically, you can swing for 210. And if you already have some damage counters placed with the spell tag, you can actually do good. Um, so yeah, this game is uh, this game is actually gonna take a while. My opponent right now, in order to knock me out, needs a welder. If he can't find himself a welder, he won't be able to knock me out here because Terminator is the only Pokemon that can actually output enough damage for the knockout. And he already played two welders. And if he don't find a welder, it's gonna be super hard for him to stay in this game. 
<coughs> I can definitely say that. Um, plus, he also plays Ninetales. Ninetales is a very good card because you can throw two cards, two fire energies from your hand and then catch one of your opponent's Pokemon and put him in the front. Alright, so maybe he just decides to use turn point and hit for 80. If I am my opponent, probably I wouldn't do that. Probably I would just maybe retreat down to something like um, Torchic and pretty much pass the turn. Um, can Torchic actually burn you? Yeah, he can burn you. And Woolpix can do the same. Oh, actually the defending Pokemon can't attack during the opponent next turn. Well, that Tail Whip attack is actually not that bad, so I don't know why he didn't want to try to flip ahead in the coin flip and prevent me from attacking. Um, probably he's thinking, um, yeah, he won't be able to do anything anyways. <coughs> and that's the good point. I'm gonna need switch card in order to do something out here, um, but I do have custom catcher and I actually have a pair of them, so I can waste both of them in order to get that Terminator in the front. Other than that, I'm gonna put that down wing on the bench and throw down another Erika's Hospitality. There we go, so maybe I can find that switch, or maybe I can't. Um, but never mind. Um, with my third Melomar, I can actually use my energy from actually we're gonna go with that viridian forest for another energy card and what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna play three copies of um psychic recharge for three energies and i'm gonna attach all three energies to my um, downwing necrozma and since we are equal with the price cards i'm not gonna be able to use my gx attack but it doesn't matter too much because anyways um i can still I can still add one energy to Giratina just to have backup plan and since I can invasion in the front I can actually use it in my favor and with the mystery treasure I'm just gonna throw that Giratina out from my hand. Uh, do I need something else? I guess I don't. I'm just gonna go quickly to the deck list, see what I have left and that's it. I'm hitting for 120 with a Dark Flash which is more than enough for the Noggin versus Thirdinator. There we go. So that's one more prize card for me. And all suddenly I'm in front of my opponent. So what's gonna happen next? <coughs> Alright, another Turtonator for the bench. And there's a rare candy for Blaziken as well. And that's the Blaziken which says that once per turn you might attach a fire energy from a disco pile to one of your benched Pokemon. Alright, so. With the Blaziken, he can faster power up and charge up Turtonator. It makes a lot of sense to run Blaziken, but it is a stage 2 Pokemon, and with so many different cards, it's not super easy to get them all in play, especially for the plus rotation. Alright, three cards being drawn with the Salazzle. Um, still, for the next turn. I'm, I'm to be honest. What I'm trying, to, what I'm gonna do here, I can knock this Naganandal out with my um, Necrozma. It's pretty simple. You can do it easily. We're not gonna do that. Uh, what are we gonna do? <coughs> oh my goodness! That fever is just awful. What are we gonna do here? Um, we're gonna just um, try to get energy on the Giratina, uh, but I need to find a way to get energy on the Giratina. Um, so I'm gonna need switch. Oh no, I'm gonna actually pay that metal energy to Giratina. And then I'm gonna Shadow Impact this Naganandle for the knockout. 130. I can still do the same with the Downwing, but I really want to keep it for the Moon Eclipse. Or maybe I should rather just go with the Sky Scorch it and then just finish the game with the Magic Swap. There are so many options that I can do that it is just ridiculous. And we're gonna see that um, Nine Tills, Nine Temptations. Ability which says that once per turn you might discard two fire energies and catch one of your opponent's Pokemon and put him in the front. And my opponent actually decided to knock my Melamar out. Doesn't matter too much. I already have another Inke ready. And huge Brock's great for my opponent. The card that I don't have in my build, but I should probably consider <coughs> running. And also that new item card says that your opponent shuffle his or her hand in the, ha in the deck and then you force your opponent to uh, basically draw some, uh, draw the, the same number of the cards equal to the price cards. So pretty much N 
but um, and printed as a item card. Rest stop? Is it rest stump or stop? Re uh, nah, rest stop is a is a song, but I'm not quite sure for the for the item. I think it is a res reset stamp. Reset stamp. I think it should be reset stamp. Something tells me that it is. Anyways, um, yeah, I guess. Um, seriously, should I do it? Well, let's go with the Inke then. And let's consider going on with the Cynthia. <clears throat> There's nothing else that I'm gonna throw down, uh, throw out with that Viridian. Other than that, very nice card, which is a spell tag. <coughs> oh, I can't throw that Metal Energy out. Unfortunately, I can't do that. Um, all right, only one more card, one more energy left, and it is a Beast Energy Shadow Impact. All right, I'm gonna knock my opponent Neganandal out, and he can knock me out for the weakness. Oh no, he can't knock me out for the weakness. All right, let's put four damage counters in the Melamar with the spell deck. I didn't pay attention. Did he play two copies of? Oh, he actually catched me with the nine tails. All right, makes sense. Anyways, I'm still one prize ahead of my opponent, and next turn I can actually use the Sky Scorched Light. And then I can finish the game probably with my top oil, but I will need to draw three prize cards, so I'm gonna need like 300, 310 damage in play. <clears throat> 310. Can I do that? Um, you can use this attack, put six damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon, which says that this is a 360. So, yeah, we can do that. We can actually win the game next turn by using that Sky Scorched Light. <laughs> And simply by winning the game with the Jirachi. But first, I'm gonna also need that Jirachi in play. <coughs> no Jirachi, no no win, you know. So yeah, I guess I can use that GX, but after that I'm gonna need Jirachi so badly. Oh, I forget about that uh, spell tag. So yeah, the good thing with the spell tag is the fact that I can even knock the Salazzle down. Um, easily with my GX next turn. And still have like 300 damage in play anyways. That's the beauty of the game. And there's a charge up. And he has so many energies in this negative. Anyway. He's like, well, why not? If I can do it, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to throw five energies to Naganandal and then swing for 80. Or maybe not. Or maybe he will. It's just hard to tell what my opponent will do next. But um, anyways. I'm going to drink some tea meanwhile. Still waiting to see what's gonna happen next. Oh, retreat into Blaziken, and then what's gonna happen after that? Far stream, nothing. Far starter. Well, yeah. The truth is, I can't swing for enough damage. I mean, I can still use my. Nah, I can't use my GX attack. I'm talking crap right now. I can't use it. Damn it! Once again, he managed to. Okay, so I'm gonna need like um, Swish is prized and. Um... A skateboard is attached onto my Inke, and yeah, all suddenly this this Night Dolls Nine Temptation changed things a little bit. Again, I'm gonna say not too much. Um, with that Beast Energy, <coughs> I can actually pull the Naga versus Blaziken, and I think I'm probably gonna do that. I think I'm probably gonna do that. Um, and other than that, if I use Invasion, which I can do easily, um, what else I can do? Um, I can Dark Flash my opponent definitely with the Beast Energy for 150, and I can knock him out so I can go down to two price cards. And again, he desperately needs Welder in order to stay in the game. And if he can get Welder, then he can actually win the game. Because he can knock my Necrozma out, and next turn he can just catch and knock my Necrozma, uh, Ultra Necrozma out. And then that's the game. Literally, he can win um, by just fighting Welder right now. 
But he actually needs to find Welder so badly. If he miss Welder, the game is over. It's simple that it can be more simpler than that. And there we go. There's the Welder. So this is the beginning of the end for me, I guess. <clears throat> Um, so he had only one energy in his head. I don't know why he didn't use Viridian Force. Maybe he's running out of the resources. 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, probably he's like short for the energy. And this is the worst possible nightmare. Um, so yeah, he actually at the end decided to throw the game out and uh, concede the game. Uh, we're gonna go quickly through my opponent deck list if it's possible. We're gonna check how many energies he played. He played 13 of them and it looks like the two of them were actually prized. That's a pretty bad luck. And there's the deck list as well that he used. Um, and how many Blazikins? He ran two of them. Yeah, so pretty much it is possible to play this deck for the post rotation. And in my opinion, it's one of the best decks probably for the post rotation. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to test it, to play with it, to see how good it can be. And we're going to see uh, if there can be a little bit more of improvements um, with this deck list. But uh, so far. I think it's a very consistent, um, it has a lot of potential, and yeah, I mean, probably it's going to be even better with the um, the, follow the, the the upcoming set and with that um, res, Reset Stamp card, and probably a couple more new cards that will be released in that set, I still need to check that out. Um, unfortunately, they 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 included Sun and Moon, uh, um, I don't um, Unified Mines, but no cards so far on TCGO because they are not even released in the English yet. Um, so yeah, for now that's it. For now this is the deck list, and I hope you guys enjoy watching this video. Make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more videos, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And yeah, um, stay safe, stay uh, strong, uh, stay positive. We'll see you next time as always. Um, have a nice day and goodbye.